Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We want to welcome you. It is Wednesday night, 7.30. You know what that means? It is our Wednesday night midweek connect. Bible study, that's <laughs> right. And so we are so thankful that you're joining us this evening. If you have your Bible, get your Bible out and turn with us to the Psalms 91. Yes. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, we'll be looking at verses 14 and 15. Mm-hmm. You know, have you ever experienced this before, whether it's a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, that anytime they call, it's because they need something from you? Right. I know that we have those individuals in our life that when your phone goes off and you see that number and their name pops up on caller ID, caller ID you say to yourself, okay, what do they want now? Because the only time they ever call me is they want something from me. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking this morning is how many times we do that to God. Right. How many times the only time he hears from us is when we need something from him. Mm-hmm. Could it be that if we're not careful in our walk with the Lord, that we treat him as those that are calling us only in time of need? Right, right. And so tonight we really want to talk about how important it is not just to call on him in the time of need, but to stay consistent in him. That's right. Read, if you will, there uh, tonight, Crystal, Psalms 91, verses 14 and 15. It reads, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Now notice, God is called by many names. Yes. He is the Lord, our healer. Mm -hmm. He is our provider, our banner, and our righteousness. That's right. He also promises to be our deliverer. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's the all in all. And so when we talk about the name of Jesus and all that he has for us as believers, it's important that we experience the mighty move of God in our everyday walk with him. Yes. Because how many times, as we said earlier, those people that only call us or get a hold of us when they're wanting wanting something from us. If we're not careful, the only time that we're praying to God or even communicating to God is because we're in need of something from him. That's right, right. And so it's important that when we look at this, that if we're going to experience all that God has for us, that we need to be consistent in our walk with God Not just in the bad times. Right, right. But also in the good times. And the only way we can do that is by knowing him. Exactly. There are many believers who will never experience God's mighty delivering power because instead of walking closely with him day by day, they wait until danger strikes and calls, then then calls upon him. Yep. So don't wait until circumstance or danger or darkness strikes, then call on him. Mm -hmm. We need to be calling on him in the good and in the bad. That's right. See, if you want God to rescue you in the bad times, you have to have fellowship with him in the good times as well. Mm -hmm. And the question is, well, why? Because God responds to faith, not our need. That's right. And That's I, right. And I really want to say that again to you tonight. God responds to our faith, not our need. Mm-hmm. And our faith is what causes God to act on our behalf. Right, right. Well, let me just say this. Um, I guess what would really tie this in together is at the beginning of Psalms 91, you know, so many times we want all of the stuff and not do the part that we're supposed to do. And the scripture says in verse 1, Psalms 91, verse 1, this is, this is the secret ingredient, if you will. He who dwells mm. in the secret place of the Most High. We have to make that a habit to dwell in that secret place. That's right. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So I get to be in the presence of the Lord. I get to be under his protection. And I get all of those benefits. Then I can go on and say all these things that, you know, nothing shall come by me and harm me. And, mm. you know, no sickness, no, no pestilence and all this stuff. I can declare because I have made a good, healthy relationship. Not just coming to him only 
when I'm in need. That's not a true relationship. That's like stroking, if you will, the, the, the genie bottle and saying, hey, well, how can you help me today? Right. If we're not careful what we do, Chris, is we treat God as some item on, on a shelf. Right. In aisle six of Walmart. Right. And we only approach him or reach out to him when we need him. Right. You know, we talked about how God doesn't really respond to our need. He responds to our faith. Mm -hmm. And in order to have that type of faith, it's because that faith is a result of us having a constant relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And by having a constant relationship with God, it is then that we're able to trust in God. That's right. You know, every one of us has been given a measure of faith at the point of salvation. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Notice faith does not come by just hearing it once. Right. It's, it's continual. Mm -hmm. It's constant. And so our relationship, it has to be in the good and the bad. That's right. See, if we don't spend enough time with him, then we don't get to know him. That's right. You know, if we're wanting to spend time with one another, we get to know one another. Exactly. Whether we get to know the good and the bad, but how many know the Bible said that everything that God has for us is good? That's right. So when we get to know God and get to know more and more of Him, then we get to know more of His goodness mm -hmm. and the blessings and all of the things that God has for us. Because remember, we are in covenant relationship with our Father through Jesus Christ. That's right. And because we're connected to this covenant, and if we have a constant relationship in the good and the bad, then when the bad comes, we're going to be ready. That's right. Because we read in Psalms 91, verse 14, you read tonight, mm -hmm. because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. That's right. We serve a delivering God mm -hmm. if we're able to set our love upon him. That's right. And he is not a man. Just as I was reminded this, the beginning of this week, uh, the, you know, in Numbers 23, verse 19, I'm mm. not a man that I should lie. That's right. So, you know, in this world, we're so accustomed to people not holding on to covenants. It's not revered as it has been in days of old. But God will not break a covenant. That's right. And he will not go against his word. If he has said it, it will come to pass. His word is yes and amen. Yes, and his love is forever and that's forever. Right. It, it, does, it never gives up. And that's hard for us because we live in a day in a culture today where people's words don't hold much weight. Exactly. People are saying one thing today and something to, different tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us, remember, we're talking about having that constant relationship with him, which builds the trust factor which then builds up our faith That's right. because he does not respond to your need. He doesn't respond to our need. Mm -hmm. He responds to our faith. That's right. According to your faith, may it be unto you. See, the enemy is after your faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he's come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. His number one goal is to steal the word out of our heart, our mind, and our mouth. Yep, and to confuse it. And to confuse, that's right, to, to twist it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did that to Christ in the wilderness. Yep. You know, he tries to twist the word. But remember what Jesus said. He said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so it's important to understand that, yes, he is a delivering God, but we have to set our love on him in the good times and the bad. That's right. Because it's easy for us to forget about God in the good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We enjoy all the blessings, but we forget that there's a blesser. That's right. We enjoy what's coming out of his hands, but we forget his face. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that it's important for us to be constant in the good and also the bad. Amen. First John 3, 20 and through 22 tells us that we have confidence towards God when we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. If we only serve God half-heartedly, then we will have not the confidence in Him mm -hmm. to deliver us from trouble. That's right. So when we're only serving God with a half-heart, then what happens is that affects our confidence. That's right. Our, if our confidence is affected, then our trust and our faith is disrupted. Mm -hmm. So now we're not able to receive the total deliverance and the total blessing that God has for us because we're still holding things back. That's right. Submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Mm -hmm. So when you and I submit ourselves unto God, don't hold anything back. That's Give right. him everything in the good and also in, in the, the bad. bad. That's right. That's a good word, isn't it? 
Oh, yes. Listen, if so when danger surrounds us, instead of being filled with faith, we find ourselves paralyzed with a spirit of fear because we totally haven't given him everything in the good and the bad. That's right. James said it this way, a man that is unstable is unstable in all of his ways. Mm -hmm. And so when we give it to the Lord, we're not just giving it to him in the bad, we're giving it to him in the good. That's right. And we prepare ourselves so that when we do go into seasons. Because mm -hmm. there will be. There will be. Because remember, either we're going into a storm, we're in the midst of a storm, or we're coming up out of a storm. That's just the process of, our, of this journey called faith and our walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we're always victorious. Amen. And so we're prepared before we ever go in. That's right. So when the storms come, we're not all of a sudden having to get prepared. No, we've already prepared ourselves to go in. It's like when a storm, when we know a storm's coming, people mm -hmm. get prepared. We want water. We want milk. We want bread. All the shells. You know, I thought it was really funny that when we first moved to Virginia Beach, <laughs> um, you know, we lived in Virginia Beach, and we lived there for four years. We moved from Michigan, and when the word was out that snow was coming. Might come. Might come. <laughs> <laughs> Three days before it, it may come right. <laughs> that water and bread is going off the shelves. People were going crazy. That's right. And they closed school down and come to find out it was just flurries. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed by that. But you know what? They were preparing for the bad mm -hmm. in the midst of the good. That's right. And so it is just so important that when we're looking at this, that in the good times and in the bad times, we will lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. That no matter what comes our way, we're not going to wait until things get bad. No, no. we're going to stay in that constant faith relationship. Remember, what the Lord has really been speaking to this house encounter is that this year is going to be our best year and our blessed year, and this is the year of victory. Yes. And the only way that we're going to be victorious is to remain in our faith and to remain in love. That's right. Faith and love is going to propel us into our next season. Yes. Into our next um, season with God. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to be able to walk in the good and in the bad. That's right. Because if not, then we will be paralyzed by fear mm -hmm. and not faith. Remember, Jesus said, and I've said it earlier, According to your belief, according to what you believe, may it be unto you. It's so important in Hebrews 4 and 12, calling those things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. Speaking not only in the good, but also in the bad. That's right. Love and, 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 and serving God with your whole heart, walking closely with him in the good times. Then when you and I need him in the bad times to be a delivering God, We'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt in the midst of that storm, That's right. our trust is anchored in him because we've already anchored it in the good time. Amen. So it's important. So going back to our scripture text tonight, when you read there, it says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. name. That's right. He elevates us to set in heavenly places. That's right. Because we know his name. At the name of Jesus, the devils have to tremble and flee. That's right. At the name of Jesus, blinded eyes are open. When we truly know the name of Jesus mm -hmm. in good times and in, in bad, bad times, he says, I will set you on high. I will elevate you above your circumstance. So those things that seem to be over your head is now under your feet Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. When we set our minds our heart and our words in faith. That's right. In right alignment with what the word is saying. And we speak the word of God and we walk out the word of God. Because remember, faith is a verb. It's an action. It's action. So we've got to declare the word of God. So we'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is going to take care of us. Because why? We've learned to put confidence in him mm -hmm. in a consistent way in the good and also in the bad. That's right. Well, you really can't know him. You can't really know anybody until you have spent quality time with them. Exactly. Because we could go out to dinner. That's a little small portion of time. That doesn't mean you're really going to know me. Right. 
It's that intimate time that you spend with somebody, the day-to-day stuff that you really, you're like, "Mm, I know them. So when you spend that quality time with the Lord, you know them, you know him, excuse me, on such an intimate level. So that way when storms arise, conflicts arise, scary things arise in your lives, you don't have to be afraid because you have confidence in whom your God is. You know that he will be faithful and just to see it through. You're prepared. You're prepared. You're like, okay, I already know. I already know who in whom I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to be moved because I know that the God in whom I serve and the God that I worship is going to see me through. That's right. Because we're going to walk in victory. Because what is it like if you have to go to somebody and ask them something and you're like, man, I really haven't talked to them in a little while, but I really need this from this person. And it's kind of scary to go to them because you don't. You, they may not be so willing to help you out, Right. Well, that's the kind of confidence that we would have in in the Lord if we're not in relationship. We'll go to him like, okay, I haven't talked to the Lord in a while. I haven't talked to God in a while, but, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. And we're like, is he going to help me because I haven't had? But when you're abiding with him, you know that he's. Correct, but that brings a lack of confidence. That's what I meant, yes. Right, right. So that brings a lack of confidence because what happens is it's like your neighbor has a tool, but yet you haven't spoken to your neighbor all year. Right. You know you need that tool, but yet you're like, man, I haven't said one thing to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like a little embarrassed going over to them and asking because uh, I haven't spoken to them. So It's awkward. I'll I'll just go ahead and just buy the tool at Home Depot. Right. Because I don't want to deal with that. Right. Well, you're exactly right. We (laughs) treat God, if we're not careful, um, I haven't really spent quality time with him Mm -hmm. in the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. See, rough seasons, stormy seasons gain to get our attention than the blessed season. Mm -hmm. We're always blessed. Mm -hmm. You're blessed whether it's the good or the bad. You're always blessed because you're a child of the Most High. Amen. Amen. But storms have a tendency or bad times or bad seasons, however we want to label it, tomato, tomato. Right. But yet those storms reveal and brings attention to, okay, we need God in this. Right. But why wait? You Mm -hmm. can't wait because Mm -hmm. then, like you said, your confidence is not moving in the right direction because you're like, man, I haven't really spent time with him. Right. And the Bible says that when we're walking with the Lord, that we can approach the throne room Boldly. boldly. Let us come boldly to boldly. the throne room. But we can't do that if we're not where our relationship should be with him. Just as if my relationship with you. That's so true. You know, I mean, I can't be like, hey, right. you know. Well, there's a, he- there's a hesitation. <laughs> right. Because right. you're like, you're like um, how are you doing? Yeah. But no, if, if, you, if you've spent time with him on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. quality time, then you can come boldly because you're like, I know what's going on. Right. The God I'm speaking to the, today is the same God I've been speaking to the, the last 30 days, the last 365 That's days. That's right. The same God that I'm speaking to this morning in 2021 is the same God that I spoke to every morning in 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 2017. That's right. And because we've built that consistent relationship. Because remember, he's not moved by our need. He's moved by our faith. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we can develop that kind of faith and that kind of trust and confidence is in him is if we spend enough time with him to simply get to know him. That's right. We got to know him. Mm -hmm. He knows us. Oh, yeah. (laughs) He's the author and the finish of our faith. He's the developer of our Mm -hmm. faith. He knows our end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so it is so important. We just want to remind you this evening, do not be the one that when your phone goes off and you say to yourself, oh, they must need something. Right. <laughs> let's not be those to God. Yeah. But let's be the ones that spend quality time in the good and also the bad. Yeah. In the good times and the bad times. Let our walk with God this year be consistent. Mm-hmm. Let it be so deep that we receive, as we talked about last Wednesday, that we receive the revelation of God's word on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Let us be so consistent in the word of God and our relationship with Jesus Christ that when the Spirit speaks, we'll hear. Yes. 
We're praying for you. Yes, we are. We're believing that your best is still ahead of you. Amen. That no matter what you're going through and what you're experiencing this evening, I've come to tell you that you are more than a conqueror. And that if we can continue to be consistent in the good times and the bad times, spending quality time with God, Mm -hmm. getting to know Him, Mm -hmm. getting to know Him in an intimate way. That's right. That no matter what comes our way, we're still going to be standing because we always stand as believers from a position of victory. And we are overcomers. Yes. May I remind you, 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that is in us than he that is in in the world. We want to pray with you this evening. We want to thank you for joining us as we opened up the living bread together. We want to bless you this evening. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we extend our hands out to the camera. Father, we thank you that your anointing is touching every heart and touching every mind. Father, I just pray, God, that we may be consistent in the good times and the bad times with our relationship and our quality time with you. Let us not wait until we need something from you. But, Father, may we develop a relationship through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray for every need. I pray for every individual that is watching us right now. And, Father, I am asking that you would touch, that you'd bring healing to the sick, strength to those that are weak. And, Father, we give you praise and we give you the glory. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Listen. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you would like to give your contributions, you can do so three different ways. You can uh, go on EncounterCOG.com, click on the Give button, take it to Secure Site, which is user-friendly. You can give your contributions there, or you can mail them into the church office, or you can stop by Monday through Thursday from 9 until 1 and pick them up. Listen, if you are watching us and you have a prayer request, you can also go to EncounterCOG. You can submit your prayer request through our email We would love to be able to lay hands on that to pray over your situation. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. You don't have to do life by yourself, especially during this time. We are here. We want to remind you. We love you. Jesus loves you. And remember, we are Encounter Strong. Be blessed in Jesus' name.